Welcome to the Health Flow Podcast. I'm your host, Jean Armand. Join me weekly as I share health information that will educate and inspire you. Please consider supporting this podcast by listening, subscribing, sharing, and rating. Once again, welcome to the Health Flow Podcast. Hello, welcome to the Health Flow Podcast. I'm so excited to have my guest, Miss Angela Hedden. She is the owner of Educated Lotus. So, and it's educatedlotus.com. So Angela, um, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your product. We'll talk about you just introducing yourself. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for having me, of course. Um, I'm a fan yeah. of the of the, of the podcast is very nice. I like the energy. It's really good. Um, I um, started my business from a personal curiosity. Um, I think like most people in this particular area, I've had a uh, steam done elsewhere outside the home. Um, my curiosity came from making this an enjoyable environment inside your home for people to take on the, the independence of doing this themselves. It did branch off into other products, but it was mostly because I just wanted to not have to drive to Duluth to get a Yanni steam. And at the time that was all that was available and I enjoyed my experience, but I wanted to have more flexibility on when I could have that service. Well, um, let's back up. What is even a Yanni steam? Some people don't even know what that is. So a Yanni steam is a vaginal sauna. So you take the heat from the water and you put herbs inside the water. That herb infused steam um, creates a sauna for the for the vagina and in the womb in the whole perineal area and so with that becomes uh, beneficial to the heat and the herbs so there are several things that are standard for a yoni steam so standard for a yoni steam is going to be you know a, a certain level of maintenance um, detoxification and uh, helping you to strengthen your pelvic floor um, and to um, clean all the venous lakes inside the, uh, the vaginal wall. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, it does help with hemorrhoids, um, uh, anal itching, and any type of engorgement or um, swelling in the area. Now, is it for a specific age? When, when can you start Yanni Steam? Um, and, and let me be very frank. My daughter is very, um, she's eight. And she's very knowledgeable about what I do as far as body maintenance. And I wanted to bring her up in an environment where she was very aware of herself and what was necessary to keep herself healthy. So um, she'll probably start um, her steaming at pubescence. Um, you start uh, yeah, steaming at pubescence all the way until, you know, till death. I mean, to be quite honest, that is a part of your body that needs maintenance. And it should be um, thought of as something that's routine. If you're in the Mayan Hills where they've been doing it for 5,000 years, you're going to go pick marigold and um, oregano and uh, chamomile and all those things to do that in your home over top of a hot pot. It's very primitive in those areas, but they've been doing it forever. It's just as commonplace as having like chamomile tea when you're on your cycle and you're having a rough cycle. So this is something that has been done for millennia. And lots of other cultures is just something that we think is new and trendy and it's not. Okay. So you can start at pubescence. Right. And um, what are some of the benefits of Yanni Steam? So the benefits of Yanni Steam is large and it ranges. Um, like I said, the basics is, you know, detoxification, um, any type of health issue, like it helps to decongest the womb. So if you're having chronic yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, um, if you have PCOS, um, PMS, PMDD, it helps with hormonal balance. Mm -hmm. It helps with um, tightening and strengthening the pelvic floor. And a lot of ladies don't realize that, especially after you have children, you know, those areas can become very weak and we're not mm -hmm. practicing, you know, all the exercises. So this is a non-invasive way to strengthen the pelvic floor and that musculature that holds everything in place. A lot of time you have a rectocele um, or some type of bladder um, displacement in that area. And those steams really help to 
um, strengthen that area and decongest it. So women don't realize how something so non-invasive um, can be so beneficial. Right. So you're a registered nurse. I am. And so we also, we recently started working together. And um, how did you even come about this Yanni STEAM? Like how, what was your motivation to start this? Um, well, it started off with, I, like I said, I had my first STEAM at Jeju. I had a young child. This was probably about four years ago. My child is eight, so she was about four. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely loved the experience, but I was like, yeah, I'm not driving to Duluth um, at, at four o'clock in the morning, even though it was open. Jeju's open right. 24 hours. So I was like, how can I do this at home? So I started researching the herbs and started looking up all the different things. I was like, you know, why aren't women doing this? Like, why don't we know about this? This is an awesome experience. And I really think for me, my experience was, although it was next to strangers, um, I really felt like my experience, you know, you know how Jeju is, you're naked next to strangers. I had that, got my first Yanni Steam at Jeju, but I had a girlfriend on each side. <laughs> I was in there with, I think, one other person, but there was strange. You know, if you're just in there, you should start to get those services at Jeju. So you're just uh, having a good time. But I think that for me, I just didn't want to have to make that trek. And I really wanted to have the experience. For me, the experience was not only was it a health, a health experience, mm -hmm. not only was it relaxing, but I really felt like it was a type of release I've never had before. So for me, it was quite, like, I didn't really know how to, place the emotion that I had attached to it. Mm -hmm. I think now that I do it at home and I do it quite often, I do it, you know, frequently. I think that um, it's a emotional and spiritual release in addition to being a health maintenance practice. Mm -hmm. I think women don't realize how much energy we have pent up in that part of our body. And when I am very stressed out, that's what I do. I'll come home and say, this is the day where I'm going to sing and right. take, you know, take a bath and serving some herbs. So, you know, I think that a lot of women just don't realize how much energy that we hold there. I think we hold just as much energy there as women as we hold in our heart. Wow. So I think for me, it's a relief. I think it's, I, I don't think that it's given the credit that it's due. Mm -hmm. and it's very therapeutic for me. Wow. And I wanted other women to have that same therapeutic experience and have the access to do it at home and the knowledge and the, and the power to feel like they were independent enough to do it at home. Right. So you, you, you tried it at Jeju, you loved it and you started doing your research. I did. I, I researched a lot of the herbs. I researched mm -hmm. a lot of the methods, the different ways in which it's done. If you go, anybody go on Etsy, you'll see a thousand different types of stools. You'll see a whole lot of different types of makeups. Mm -hmm. um, and a different, a whole lot of different systems on how to do this at home, which mm -hmm. I advocate anybody that find the one that's most cost effective to start with and then build on that experience. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, how often are you giving services to women now or just introducing them? Like, how's your business going with that? Um, the, this is my second year in business and it's going quite well. I, I sell out of an artist's market, Magnolia Pink on uh, a U.S. Highway 42 in McDonough with well, Stockbridge. I think they're fighting over the area. So it's, sometimes it's McDonough, sometimes it's Stockbridge on the, on the, on the Google Maps. But anyway, um, I think that I sell, anytime I'm in the building, I usually sell the product. Wow. Um, women are very curious about that. I get um, calls from the owner or somebody working in the store while I'm at work just to ask questions. A lot of women are apprehensive. They, they're curious, but they're scared. And I, I, I want to alleviate all of that fear about you being able to do it at home. So I, I usually sell when I'm there. I do quite well at the market. Mm -hmm. I also have a very loyal client base in an independent studio, hair studio. So I do quite well, especially this year compared to last year. But mm -hmm. I think this year I've formulated a lot more educational material. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think women um, are, the, the buzz is kind of around, so people are more apt to ask me questions about it. And did, this year is 2020, so maybe people really had more time to investigate more health products. I you agree. Know? Yeah. Now, how, how often do you, rec I know you said that you do it often as a stress relief. What is like maintenance that you recommend? Um, maintenance can range from woman to woman. Um, and I can give you several different examples. Um, like for me, I steam once a week. 
I try to steam about once a week and do a, a bath about once a week. Um, I had a woman, she was 47, have a horrific cycle. So I do have a regimen where you can do a steaming cycle and it's six steams over, um, over like right before your cycle, you do three steams and then so it's like a, like a three week, three before, then you have your cycle, then you do three more. And um, I, so you can steam up to six times in a three week period, okay. depending on your regimen, depending on what you need, depending on what your needs are. Uh, depending on how you know heavy your menstrual cycle is, so mm -hmm. that can range from once a month to six to seven times mm -hmm. um, a month. So just depending on what your need is. I had a woman, she, like I said, she was forty-seven. She had like two week cycles. It was horrific. She was just having a really tough time. Now, don't do what she did. She took the product and she steamed. She she steamed. She said she was steaming, and she ended up not having a cycle for like six weeks. I said you have to let your cycle you know, naturally come, uh, and you have to release those, those fluids and that you have to let your womb break down. But the relief that she felt made her so overzealous that she over, I think she overstayed. I said, you're gonna have to stop doing that. But mm -hmm. the relief, I mean, this is a woman who had had horrific periods for over 10 years and she got such relief from steaming in itself. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that, um, you know, I think six to eight times, like you're going to do six, six steam cycle and you're going to do like one, one steam or two steams a week that you're not one of the cycle. I think that's fine. If you, especially if you're coming into steaming from a very, you know, um, uh, horrific and traumatic cycle that you're having, if you're, if it's just, you know, very uh, long and very heavy and very painful. I think we can find a regimen where you can steam up to eight times mm -hmm. a month. Right. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend that any from nowhere from one month of, of doing the cycle, see how you feel in your next cycle, and then doing that again after we evaluate, you know, mm -hmm. how you do after that cycle. Yeah. And it doesn't, I mean, it makes perfect sense. Um, I know back in the day when the women would use the, the hot water bottles on their tummies when they were having bad cramps. But you don't even, even if you don't have bad cramps, this is, you know, has nothing. It's psych, you're a difficult cycle is not the only reason to do the Yanni steaming. No, this is, yeah, this is like you're saying, tightening, uh -huh. you know, just providing more um, tightening and more circulation, increasing circulation in that area. Yeah, more vascular. Yeah. And then I think um, what women don't realize is we don't know, like, um, a lot of women get a, a, a kick up or a increase in yeast near the, their cycle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've never seen a gynecologist say to me, you know, Angela, you, you have a lot more yeast, you know, right now. Nobody's ever going to say that to you too. It's irritating you. But yeah. I think what happens is when you steam your, um, your, the, the color and the amount of your uh, menstrual blood regulates, your cycle drops down to four to five days. Um, you have um, a much milder cycle uh, and you can adjust that based on, you know, how, you know, the relief that you need. But yeah. I think a lot of women don't realize the, the structure of the womb is maintenance by this. So mm -hmm. if you're going to do um, steaming once a month to, you know, three times, four times a month, that's going to help with how your cycle looks, how it feels, how your, um, your reproductive system and your womb is operating how you feel in your core. So there's a lot of different reasons why, you know, steaming on a regular basis, even if it's once a month is beneficial. Right. Wow. That's good. That's good. You know, women and you, just you talking about steaming and cycle, I know how off, there are women out there that are um, young and old that are suffering, especially with like fibroids and things like that, unnecessarily. Like, it's amazing to me how, and I mean, we all have our personal opinion about how we should live our lives, you know, how it affects you to have a hysterectomy versus not having one, you know, just things like that. That's all personal decision. And I, it, there's no right or wrong decision, but it just amazes me the length of suffering that a woman will take the anemia, the fatigue, the tiredness, the cloudy brain, you know, before they say enough is enough. I need to like 
live better, be better to myself. Like, could you imagine? I don't think that women feel, and it's sad, but I don't think that women feel comfortable talking mm-hmm. to their gynecologist uh, yeah. right away. And, you know, a lot of times we're taught when we're young that this is just your cycle. So you just have to deal with your cycle. And so we end up, you know, later in life, just really suffering and thinking that this is, a, this is the way it's supposed to be. And then you tell your, your, your PCP, like, hey, or your gynecologist, hey, I'm having a rough cycle. They're going to give you some ibuprofen and they're going to say, you know, take this around your cycle. And I don't really think that we are utilizing all of the non-invasive natural products. I've had so many women and I, and I will advocate for, I had a woman come to me, she wanted to buy um, a starter kit. And I was like, you know, have you ever had one? She's like, yes, I had one at this place. And I actually bought a starter kit. Well, don't buy my products. Let's figure out what you need to feel safe doing at home with the products that you already have. Right. And so when she was able to feel empowered with the knowledge of how to use what she already had, you know, she was able to really decrease the discomfort of her cycle at home independently. She just needed to feel empowered with the, with the education to do that. And I think that it's important. I don't care if you buy my products or the next woman's products. I want you to be doing the service for yourself so that you can be empowered to take control of your body. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we want for self-empowerment, self-improvement, self-love, self-worth, all of that. That's Fair, what, yeah, all of that. Fair, all of that for women because it, it just amazes me daily how we either take it for so long or we ignore symptoms. And by no means, I want to clearly say that, I mean, the things that we're discussing here never replaces your annual checkup with your your doctor, you following up with any difficulties you're having, you're not to suffer, you're not to have abnormal pains, abnormal periods, you know, anything. You need to get medical clearance, make sure you're healthy, doing the right things. And this is just supportive care. This is maintenance and also prevention because you can prevent being um, vaginal dryness, you know, things like that, yeast infections or even bacterial vaginosis, which is just an overgrowth of your own um, natural flora. Mm -hmm. So we, I want to be clear with that. You agree? I do. I do agree. And I think that, you know, I'm, I'm an advocate for, you know, utilizing both sides of it. I think you can't go wrong when you stack the deck on both sides. So I think that what people need to realize, this is like any over the counter medication that you would take for your cycle. It is natural, but it's still over the counter. It is a therapy. It is not med. It is not a medical. It is not to replace any medical treatment. Um, what you do need to do is be honest with your, you know, uh, gynecologist or PCP, whoever does your pe- yearly pap, about the services that you use. Um, mm-hmm. Just like any medical regimen, you're gonna, you know, let them know that you're doing this, and you're gonna let them know that, you know, it, it's enjoyable if it's helped you. And if it, and it, you know, I have a lot of women with PCOS. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one woman with PMDD. Um, you want to, you know, some people may not know what those, those mean, what PCOS okay. stands for. So you want to explain to them? I, so PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Mm-hmm. And so it comes with a lot of different things uh, wrapped into one, but mostly it's a hormonal balance. It mm-hmm. can cause, uh, it's got a lot of cysts that grow, multiple cysts inside of your womb. And so they can grow in different areas. It, it can cause, you know, a, a, a enlarged abdomen, it can cause diabetes, it can mm-hmm. cause visual changes, heritism, which is overgrowth of hair. It causes, horm- you know, the hormonal balances can be caused acne, body acne. There's a lot of different things that go along with that. And so um, a lot of times ladies will come to me and they have had a diagnosis of PCOS. I have one very loyal customer and her cycles have regulated. Um, her, they're not as long, they're not as painful. Um, her actual paps are looking better. I mean, I'm not going to say anything is a cure-all, but I am going to say because it's polycystic ovarian syndrome, what happens is they're not going to go in and remove every time. They're going to realize that this is a chronic condition. So this is a therapy for the chronic condition. Right. PMDD is, um, so what I always get this wrong, uh, bear with me, um, dysmorphic disorder, 
premenstrual dysmorphic disorder. So that is an extreme hormonal swing. Mm -hmm. So whether you were light and bubbly the day, you know, five days before your cycle, when your cycle starts to hit, you're very, you can become violent. You say things that you don't mean. There's very yeah. extreme emotional swings with that. And so a lot of times women have to take like, um, uh, uh, antidepressants or other things to help regulate or um, like Ativan and Xanax just to regulate their mood right before their cycle mm -hmm. because they turn into, they flip into a whole different person. Right. And so I actually know somebody who suffers from this personally and she has, you know, taken medication for years, but this has helped to really like regulate and calm her down. So steaming mm -hmm. right before her cycle is important. Right. To help release whatever energy she has and it's also to help regulate her hormones. So there are certain, there's the uh, menopause blend, which is a hormonal balancing. And mm -hmm. then there are certain blends that have more estrogen based um, gotcha. herbs in them that will help her with those type of mood swings. Okay. Well, thank you. So what else do you want to tell us about your products and services? Anything else? Um, I do want to say that um, I am very passionate about women's health um, and my products are based on products that have been used and sampled by real women that are having real problems and I don't put anything on the market that I would not use myself that I would not and I think about this constantly that I would not recommend to my daughter at any stage in her life so I feel like if my daughter was going through menopause my menopause blend is okay for her. And mm -hmm. I've had women try it. I've had my products time, tr you know, tried and true. They're tested um, with real women that have real problems. And I want women to feel empowered to talk about the things that they're going through and not suffer in silence. I am one of those women that when a woman starts talking about her female problems, I lean in. Mm -hmm. I want to know. I want to help. Um, so my products are all based on natural therapies that can help you with, um, you know, maintenancing, spiritually releasing and building yourself up as a woman. Right. And also you don't have to have a problem. You can, no. this is just also a maintenance practice, like you said, in congestion, like self-care. Yeah. Self -care. I think a lot of women don't realize you don't have to have a problem yeah. um, to take care of yourself. You, you, can, yeah. you need to have no problems whatsoever and have, you know, a, a whole, you know, realization about how much you weren't taking care of yourself. Yeah. Even if you didn't have to go to the doctor with a problem. A lot of women say, well, you know, I just didn't think about, you know, taking care of myself in that manner because it's an intimate place and women don't think about that. Yeah. But I have, in addition to the steams, I have baths. I always recommend women do soaks and soak, soak in herbs and use the beneficial, um, uh, uh, side effects or the benefits of herbs for their skin. So our, 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 our whole body and I have oils and I have um, mists that are hydrating for the skin that also have fragrance. So I have a, 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 a wide range of products that I sell specifically okay. for women to maintenance their bodies. All right. So how can women find out about you and contact you? Give us uh, all the tweets and well, I'll have it listed too. Okay, so um, you can find me locally um, at uh, Magnolia Pink Artisan Market at 2248 um, Highway 42 North. Um, my products are sold there. You can also find me at www.educatedlotus.com. I'm also Educated Lotus on Instagram, Twitter, and um, Facebook. Uh, you can contact me if you have questions. I think a lot of women are apprehensive about calling me up. I might not answer, you know, because I work full time, but um, might not answer right away. But if you ever have a question, women can contact me at 470-333-2524. That is my work number for Educated Lotus. You can call me there and I would be happy to have a conversation with them to alleviate any questions that they might have. Awesome. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate you sharing and we got to get us everybody. Yanni steaming y'all. Yeah. Not have to go all the way to Jeju. And I personally tried your products and I'm loving it. So, so glad. this is something that we should do. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you. All right. You. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Health Flow Podcast. Your support 
is much appreciated. It is my goal to share health information that you find helpful. Email topics of interest to the health flow at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram at the health flow, also on Facebook at the health flow. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share. Until next time, keep your health flowing.